breaking news on sunrise. A fire breaks out at a kinder care learning center in Brooklyn Park. I've got the latest as crews are still on scene. We know this is going to be uh, not a blizzard, but a winter. It's going to be a little longer um, than I think uh, folks in the beginning were anticipating. 77 cases of coronavirus in Minnesota, but the governor warns there could be much more. The new concerns when it comes to testing. There are now reports of stores upcharging customers for high demand items. It's called price gouging and it's legal in Minnesota. Our I-team explains why. Plus, with kids out of school, many parents are concerned about learning. One mother who's been homeschooling for six years shares her tips to keep students on track. A soggy Thursday on the way as we transition to the first day of spring later on today and a little snow for the first day of spring for some. It's Thursday, March 19th. Care 11 Sunrise starts now. It has been a tough couple of weeks and with coronavirus dominating the headlines, we want to give you a break. This morning we're asking you to send the love. Send us uplifting messages to loved ones and friends or to your community. All you have to do is use the hashtag send the love and hashtag sunrisers as well. And we'll share your comments in just a couple of minutes. That is right. A lot of you guys already telling us some of the good right now happening in your lives. So thanks for that. First though, let's get you out the door with a check of your weather and traffic. Going to start things off with Sven. Yeah, we're looking at uh, some mist out here this morning, but rain on the way. It's going to be a soggy one today. If you really want to get out some fresh air, do it now early this morning because the rain is only going to be filling in and picking up more through the day. We've got a little band of showers already off to the southwest moving in our direction, so we'll start to see some scattered showers moving in, but there's more where that came from. In fact, we've got thunderstorms popping up there around Sioux City, Iowa and into uh, parts of Nebraska. That area will be filling in, moving on to the north and northeast. 39 right now, uh, warm. And uh, it's going to stay around 40 through the day today, so that's why it's just liquid. But we're going to see a brief shot of snow, it looks like, later in the evening. Yeah, it's going to be a wiper kind of morning commute. Yeah, wet roads here, 252 and 85th Avenue. This is up in the North Metro. It's been quiet, though, all morning long, except the crash just popped up here along this stretch of 35W southbound. This is just past the Mounds View area towards uh, 94, 694, the loop there. So I'll get some information on this crash, try to find it on the traffic cameras and have an update. All right, thanks for that, Alicia. Breaking overnight, a fire broke out at a kinder care learning center in Brooklyn Park. Uh, Ellery McArdle is on scene, and Ellery, what can you tell us right now? Yeah, so guys, just got an update a few minutes ago from Brooklyn Park Fire, and they say that this kinder care is a total loss. Now, uh, the crews are still on scene, as you can see behind me, but uh, they're just putting out the hot spots right now. The flames are out, but again, they're just trying to spray some water on the building and get the hot spots out. I want to show you a video from just a few hours ago after this fire broke out, I and mean, you can see the flames were so intense and just billowing out of this building. Uh, Brooklyn Park Fire says they were called just after 2 o'clock this morning to this but they say the fire started in one room and really took off. So right now, like I said, they're putting out the hot spots. They're trying to figure out how this fire started and whether or not there's anything in here to indicate if it was suspicious or not, but it's too early for them to kind of even indicate that at this point. Now we do know that kinder care locations, some of them have been closed because of coronavirus concerns, but we just talked with a worker and she says that this place has been open. And in fact, yesterday they had 50 kids in there yesterday. Um, but again, the fire was overnight, so good news, no one was inside, so no one was hurt. Back yeah. to you. Glad that nobody was hurt, but now you wonder what happens to those kids who were going there. Thank you, Ellery. We're tracking the latest in the fight against the coronavirus. We begin with a look at the latest numbers. Right now in Minnesota, there are 77 people infected, but that number may be a bit deceiving. Governor Wall says there's currently a backlog of 1,700 samples that have not been tested. The federal government pulled resources in Minnesota to focus on harder hit areas, slowing testing here. Governor Walls also announced he is signing more executive orders. He's restricting non-essential visitors at Minnesota veterans homes, eliminating weight restrictions on trucks and hourly limits on truck drivers to support the supply chain and offering paid leave and immediate health benefits for new state employees who can't work because of the virus. It is an eerie and, uh, and heartbreaking scene to see shuttered businesses and shuttered schools. But the encouraging part of that means is the better we do that, the sooner we get through this and the more lives that we save. Also, DMV offices are closing, so the governor says he's ensuring that you don't get a ticket for expired licenses and tabs. There are likely more coronavirus cases in Minnesota because there's a backlog of 1,700 tests. 
In the U.S., there are now more than 9,400 cases. A week ago, that number was a little more than 1,000. 150 people have now died, or died and 106 people have recovered. The number of coronavirus cases is also rising in Wisconsin with 113 positive cases. State health officials say more than 50 of those cases are in the Milwaukee area. And now we'd like to offer a quick correction on a story we aired yesterday. We mistakenly said 12 workers at Hennepin Healthcare tested positive for coronavirus. We should have made it clear it was 12 healthcare workers statewide, not specifically at Hennepin Healthcare. Congress is turning to phase three of its coronavirus plan, helping small businesses struggling due to the pandemic and providing direct cash assistance to Americans. This after President Trump approved the second phase last night, providing individuals with paid emergency leave and free coronavirus testing. President Trump will visit FEMA today to discuss coronavirus preparations and response. Meanwhile, Delta is cutting 70% of its flights. Nearly 10,000 employees have volunteered to take unpaid leave. Well, to one of our most talked about and shared stories online in this morning's Digital Dive, you likely notice the shortage right now of essential supplies like toilet paper, hand sanitizer, and cleaning supplies because of the COVID-19 pandemic. But you may also have seen that people are now selling these products at astronomical prices. And that's called price gouging. And it's actually legal in our state and it's happening all across the country. In fact, Menards just got this cease and desist letter from Michigan Attorney General's office claiming the stores have engaged in a systemic effort to exploit the public fear about coronavirus. They're accused of doubling the price on cleaning products like bleach. Minnesota's Attorney General Keith Ellison says there's not much he can do about it here because, like I said, it's not illegal. 34 states and D.C. have at least some sort of law against price gouging, according to the website Find law, but these 16 states, including Minnesota, have no statute specifically outlawing price gouging. DFL State Representative John Lesh tells us it's a complaint he's been hearing a lot lately. It's my hope that we could get this through in the next week or two and business owners would get the high sign that no, you can't do this, it's illegal. All right, so Representative Lesh is hoping violators will be hit with a $10,000 penalty. And a lot of our Sunrisers had a lot to say about this. Trudy says it should be illegal. Walmart's price on toilet paper are ridiculous. And then we got this comment from Don saying if you don't pay the price, they bring the price down. And then Trudy tells us when this is all over, don't forget which stores did that and take your business elsewhere. Ooh, but yeah, I, I still good. can't believe people are doing that, trying to make a buck on this big situation no. that we're all facing. Right, and so many people in, in really dire situations now that businesses are closed mm -hmm. and so forth. So yeah, I just... I understand supply and demand in a normal yeah. situation, but mm -hmm. I mean, these are unusual times yeah. and it's unfortunate that, you know, some chains are trying to profit off this. Yeah. All right, thanks, Alicia. Well, new information about the coronavirus coming out constantly, and you can stay on top of it by texting virus to 763-797-7215. You'll get a link with our coverage sent straight to your phone. You can also text questions to that number, and we'll try to find an answer for you. Now here's a look at today's other top stories in your morning rush. There's a huge surge of people filing for unemployment in Minnesota. Typically, the state receives 500 new applications per day. Now it's 2,000 per hour. The state is urging you to apply online and leave the phone lines open to those who do not have internet access. There was confusion over whether or not hair and nail salons were closed under Governor Walz's order issued Monday. According to the Board of Cosmetology late Tuesday night, they are. So places like District Salon and Spa here in Edina were busy canceling and rescheduling appointments, also cleaning out their spaces. According to Governor Walz's order, these businesses must be shut down until March 27th. Representative Ilhan Omar is getting her plans in place to handle the coronavirus. Today, she's unveiling a package of bills. One bill would grant a monthly payment of $1,000 for every adult and $500 for every child. Another bill would require the federal government to fully compensate small businesses during this time. Her team says this recovery package will help keep families and small businesses afloat. And a big surprise for a Bloomington man on his birthday. Mike Mudgett's entire family surprised him on his 87th birthday Tuesday at Martin Luther Manor. They were told they couldn't come into the facility because of coronavirus, but that didn't stop them from carrying out an impressive party outside. And that's your Thursday Morning Rush. Sven, what's the one thing we need to know about weather? A soggy day on the way. Yeah, we got uh, rain filling into the southwest across Nebraska and Iowa. 
all headed our way for the midday, especially an afternoon looks pretty wet. Uh, temperatures in the 40s, but we are going to see a brief shot of snow this evening. We'll talk more about uh, who is the best chance of seeing that uh, snow accumulate coming up. And I've been hopping around on some traffic cameras along the stretch of 35W in the northeast corner of the metro. And as you can see, not seen any crashes that was reported there. So probably already cleared. Roads just wet this morning. It's time now to connect the dots when we make the news make sense. One of the biggest uncertainties surrounding COVID-19 is a treatment for it. When could we see a solution? Sherman Chow connects the dots. While there are a lot of scary headlines when it comes to coronavirus, there is also positive news, like the fact that hundreds of scientists from around the world have teamed up to find a treatment. Let's connect the dots. Right now, there are no antiviral drugs known to be effective against COVID-19, the strain of coronavirus that's causing this pandemic. All doctors can do is try and ease symptoms. But when it became clear last month how much of a threat this virus is, a massive team of scientists got to work. They synthesized the genes from COVID-19, injected them into cells to find out how it operates. Then they poured over a list of drugs already approved by the FDA to see if anything might work. They found 50. The research team has now shipped those drugs to labs across the world, from New York to Paris, to see if any are effective against live versions of COVID-19. All of this was done in a matter of weeks. The team expecting their first results in a few days. Well, that's positive news. I yeah. mean, when, you know, scientists and whatnot come together, how quickly they can get things done. Yeah. Well, it's a question we get a lot. Can this coronavirus spread through mail? The short answer is no. We'll explain why. Many parents working to keep kids sharp while they're out of school. We'll get tips from a veteran homeschooler to help even the busiest of parents. And it is National Certified Nurse Day, so we want you to give a shout out to everyone in healthcare working to keep us healthy. Use the hashtags SendTheLove and SunRisers. We'll share your messages in just a few minutes.